We have arrived at Custer State Park, right outside of the town of Custer, South Dakota, in western South Dakota. It is part of the Badlands. It is also adjacent to Wind Cave National Park. Custer has a large diversity of wildlife. It is a very nice park and very diverse. And it's kind of hilly, being part of the Badlands, you can imagine how hilly it is. So, let's take a look at Custer and the animals that we have photographed at Custer State Park. I visited Custer State Park during the first week of June during 2020. This was immediately after the lockdown, so there were a few services available. The majority of the visitor centers and the ranger stations were closed to public access, but of course the wildlife was there. This video will cover primarily the wildlife loop and parts of Highway 87 because I was only there for a short time. The wildlife you can expect to see at the park include bison, deer, both whitetail and mule deer, antelope or what is known as pronghorn, elk, some mountain goats, coyotes, some burros, some bighorn sheep, a variety of birds such as burrowing owls, lots of songbirds and so on, some wild turkeys, and an abundance of prairie dogs. So Custer State Park is located in roughly the southwest area of the state of South Dakota in the northern parts of the United States. Shown on the screen is a National Park Service map that shows the location of Custer which is just above Wind Cave National Park and just outside the town of Custer and south of the town of Rapid City. There are a number of national parks and national monuments in this area not shown on the map are some of the national monuments that are down in the northeast corner of Wyoming such as Devil's Tower and that is part of the same geologic features that have formed the Badlands area. This is an area that's tremendously rich in history. There are a lot of memorials to the Native Americans such as Wounded Knee. There is also the Mount Rushmore carving in this area, a number of caves such as Wind Cave and Jewel Cave and other areas like that. The scenic highway north of the park goes through the Needles Parkway and that is another very interesting area to take a look at. However, like I said, this video is primarily going to cover the wildlife loop in Highway 87 that goes down towards Wind Cave National Park and also down towards Hot Springs. Shown on the screen is an enlargement of that same National Park Service map. I'm sorry I don't have better quality maps to show you, but they're copyrighted materials and we're not allowed to place copyrighted material on our videos. The National Park Service maps are public domain so we are allowed to put them on our YouTube videos. You can see that the wildlife loop extends from Highway 16A south along the east side 
it goes down and loops around down at the bottom and then comes back up and meets with Highway 87. The Wildlife Loop is a very rich area and it is rolling hills with lots of bison and pronghorn and you can see on the map that I've identified a location of bison and pronghorn but the bison and pronghorn are pretty much scattered throughout the wildlife loop. There are a couple of side roads that are down towards the bottom of the park and these are generally identified by a name but they're also identified by a number like there's CSP3, CSP4, and so on. Make sure to drive these particular roads because a lot of times these back roads is where you will see more of the wildlife and this is also an area where you'll get away from some of the crowds. Towards the bottom of the loop is where I found both the mule deer and the whitetail deer and I've also been told that this is the location of the elk although I did not see them during this particular trip. The burrows I found during the midday down south of the corral area. They were right next to the road. In fact they were actually begging for apples and treats from the various tourists who were there. As you go over to Highway 87 which heads down to Rock Springs and to Wind Cave National Park this is the location of the prairie dogs which are in the open fields and there were also bison in this area along the rolling plains. So make sure to drive these areas and go down and see these animals in this area also. If you continue into the hot springs area this is the location of the mammoth dinosaur excavation and the wind cave national park of course is one of the caves is located in the area and both of these are are worthy of part of your visit there are numerous camping areas located around and inside the park. There are also cabins that you can rent that are in the park and if you prefer to uh, go as cheap as you can you can go to the French Creek area and you can camp on your own outside of a campsite in the wilderness for about seven dollars a day. I find that to be an excellent way to save money is to kind of camp off on your own and not have to pay the expensive fees which can range 25 to 30 dollars a day just for a tent campsite. Uh, along with this video I have shown a number of images that I have taken during this trip and I hope that you have enjoyed this basic introduction to Custer State Park. I plan to go back again and I'll make another vi video when I go back and stay a longer time but this just gives you an introduction to the wildlife loop in parts of Highway 87. If you like this content please hit the like icon and subscribe to my channel for a lot more content in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining us.